I would say accommodation is the family taking up the OCD's business. So the OCD is now telling the family what it, what it, it has to do. And everybody now is listening to OCD. So OCD is now sort of taking everybody in. And with parents who have kids with OCD, they know all too well that their lives start to, to circulate around this. And and they're navigating it on, on a daily basis in a way that's frustrating. And some parents have OCD themselves, so they can empathize, which might make it harder. And other parents don't understand it at all. And you have a lot of conflict. And sometimes those are in the same family. I might have one family member who had it and remembered it. I have another family member who doesn't. And so those family members now fight about how to manage the kid as best they can. And we wind up with OCD wrapping the whole family around its finger. Like a good example, one kid who had, who was sibling was contaminated, according to the, to the kid with OCD. Well, what that meant was they were having dinners where, where the one sibling had to sit way across the table and they were, they were having to serve that kid after the kid who has OCD because they were afraid that it would, it would trigger an OCD uh, a flare, is what they're calling it. And then they, the kid wouldn't eat. So in order to have everybody at the dinner table, they were making all these sort of odd adjustments that were designed to help us stay at the dinner table, but were, were really reinforcing the OCD. So a lot of things like that in the service of making your kid feel better, sounds like a good idea, but it's not. Make it worse. And, and that's what we, we, we've got to make sure when we're treating, especially the young kids. I mean, the young kids, it's crucial. Uh, but we got to make sure that we're not letting the OCD dictate what, how this family lives. We've got to stop that.